The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of WBGR Network. Last time I saw you was 2019. Happy New Year! Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pamela J Show. I am your host, Pamela J, and I'm so excited about this year, what it's going to bring, the resolutions that people are going to put out there, the resolutions people are going to attempt to do, <laughs> the resolutions that you put down and you might not finish. But we still are grateful that you're going to put them down. I'm excited about 2020 and I am so glad it is here. It is the second day of 2020. Um, and um, I know that for so many people that I've spoken to, so many people that I've listened to, they were waiting for this moment. 2019 might have not have been a good year for a lot of people. Some people it may have been, but guess what? We get to wipe the <laughs> slate clean right. and start all over and reset and recharge. And we are so grateful to God for that. With me today is my brother that I just met today. <laughs> We've been going back and forth on the phone, Mr. Adrian Waters. And I am so excited for him to come and share his testimony and talk to you about vision board making and the benefits of vision boards, which is what our show is going to be about today. And I am glad that he's here also because I've never done a vision board. And so I'm ready to take all of the tools that he's going to share with us and apply them this weekend when I work on my own vision board. Um, so... I hope that this show really, really bless you. God speaks of visions various times in his word. We have gospel artists that make songs about vision. We have people that talk about vision. I've even coined this year, my personal goal this year, or my personal theme about vision, is that this is the year for me of double vision. And I am expecting God to do exceedingly and abundantly above what I ask. I'm even stretching my own faith and not asking for the little things. Mm -hmm. I'm going beyond, beyond, and I'm gonna want God to prove his word Mm -hmm. on the things that I'm standing on. So I'm grateful that Brother Adrian is here to share with us some of the things that he's placed on his vision board that has come to pass in the past. And so I am ready to hear about that good stuff. But that's coming on later on. Um, another thing that I also want to say is that we have gospel artists like Richard Smallwood, who um, his group, Visions, um, is implementing the word or has implemented the importance of the word vision. And so I'm very, very excited about 2020 and what it represents and um i just want to go ahead and pray and get started so that we can hear all about adrian all about his visions all of the stuff that's come to pass his bio is one of those etc etc bios that, that when i read it i'm like okay this is going on and on and on but i love it because he is one of the people that is a testament that he is not putting limitations on God. And I think that that's sometimes we do that so that when that happens, I think we kind of lessen our vision. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray the first prayer of the year for the second day of the year on the Pamela J show. And then we're going to get started finding out some little stuff about Mr. Adrian here and, um, just pray to God that you glean from it, that you take some things away from it, and you'll be able to apply it to your own life. And so, Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we just thank you, thank and you, we Lord. praise you for this day. We thank you for the fruits of our lips and the things that's going to come out to be able to bless somebody else in this vision show. God, your word says to write the vision plain upon the tables so that he that may read it may run with it, God. And we pray this day that we someone is inspired to get together their own vision board and that they're going to stand on your promises that those things are going to manifest and come to pass and prove you right not wrong but prove you right and god we just lift this prayer up to you in the name of jesus and we thank you god and amen amen 
Welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you, you y'all. He had to press his <laughs> way through the highways and byways in the traffic of Maryland, D.C., Virginia, the DMV traffic just to be here. And we are so grateful. Some people are still on vacation, mm. home chilling. But then there are some people who went to work today. And I think I met a whole bunch of them trying mm. to get here right. to the studio. And so thank you so much, sir, thank for coming. You for having me. And we no, thank you for coming. I praise God that you pressed your way all the way from where you live. <laughs> Y'all, you Baltimore people, I just want you to know that Mr. Adrian is a Baltimore native. And so big ups to be more. <laughs> so I have one of your own with me on the show today, and he again is going to share some tips to us on Vision Board and the benefits and results of having one. Now, before we do that, because we'll really get into that part after our commercial break, but before we do that, I just want Mr. Adrian to come and share with us some of the things that he's done in his past and who he is, because, you know, I'm excited, too. I'm going to learn more about him just like you guys are. Even though I've read some of the things that he's done, I still want to hear and have him to share with you all some of the things that has made Adrian Waters who Adrian Waters is today. Okay. So, my first question <laughs> is, who is Adrian Waters from Baltimore? Um, I am, <laughs> as you said, from Baltimore. I'm a Baltimore native. Um, for those who are in PG and DC, you probably can hear it in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Be more. When I first moved here from South Carolina, I heard, I think, more about Baltimore than I did PG County. So, right. I, I had one time considered moving to Baltimore, but I stayed right. here. So, I always like going up there, and, you know, I like Baltimore. So, I'm, I'm very city. happy that you are here representing your city. That's right. <laughs> Right. So go ahead. Tell us some more things about you. I am a husband and father of two beautiful girls, Jalen Jordan, my wife, Tiara, who's in studio off camera with hey. me, supporting me. <laughs> um, I am a real estate professional, mm -hmm. and I, I own a couple of businesses, and then I have a nonprofit as well. I mm -hmm. didn't even put that in the bio. The bio is long, <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> some more stuff I may drop out. did not want to... <laughs> I did not want to write a book, but I also didn't want to leave anything out. So I tried to, it's a lot. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure I gave you what you needed for today. You know, I'm going to say this. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I mm -hmm. remember talking to a gospel artist one day and I said, he said, do you do resumes? And I said, I do sometimes. And he said, you know, my resume is 25 pages long. And I said, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's a book. It is a book. <laughs> you know, and so I don't think that you should limit your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still remain humbled right. in sharing what you've done. Absolutely. Because um, I think sometimes when the bio was very, very small, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I discredit that, mm -hmm. but I'm just like, I know there's more in you, you know? Right, absolutely. So I don't, I don't oppose to a long bio. Um, because it represents a part of who you are. Right. You know, it's made you who you are. And so, but so whatever else that you feel that, that our audience need to know about you, that will help them as well. You know, let it come out. Okay. <laughs> let it come out. Let it all come out. So you are the Landlord Gopher. I like yeah. that name. Tell our audience, um, who is the Landlord Gopher? How did you come to that name? Because you didn't name it that at first, right? No, no. So I've been in real estate for close to 20 years mm -hmm. my um experience or my expertise and my niche is property management and okay. consulting mm -hmm. okay That's so nice. my, yeah so my first company i named after really after my father it was called waters property management services okay. okay which obviously my last name is waters also but he always wanted to be an entrepreneur he never was and i wanted him to see his name on a business That's nice. so i really did that for him right. and so the acronym or the the letters for waters property management services mm -hmm was WPMS. And so mm -hmm. when I would put that on signs and things, people would say, <laughs> the people, would, yeah, people would say, that sounds like a radio station or something like oh, that. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, all right, that's not translating uh -huh. for marketing purposes. Right. So what I did was I created like a marketing arm for that company. It was called Landlord Aspirin. Like we take away the headaches for landlords. Oh, and that converted, nice. yeah, so the you know, like on paper we were, Waters Property Management Services, right. but in ads, we were Landlord Aspirin. Right? That's nice. And everybody liked that. They would go online looking for a property manager, and they would see all of these, you know, stoic uh, corporate names, and then they would come to Landlord Aspirin, and mm -hmm. the tagline was taking away your headaches. Mm -hmm. And people were like, that's what I need. It converted very well. Okay. Um, so what happened was I wanted to 
about five six years ago I wanted to kind of rebrand mm -hmm. streamline my mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. I um, I took away some things that it weren't you know doing a lot and mm -hmm. some of the stuff that I just wanted to change I just changed and the next thing that I said I wanted to do was all right so new service new brand new has to be a new name mm -hmm. and so when I look at a lot of because I'm a student of like marketing and advertising, mm -hmm. even though I didn't go to school for it. Mm -hmm. So when I look, if you look on television, it's like, you know, Geico has the pig and the lizard. Like right. everybody has like some little caricature or something to kind of like represent mm -hmm. their brand or their company. Right. And so landlord and a gopher, that's, a, that's in our logo, mm -hmm. was kind of like um, what I wanted to do because that's what we do for landlords. Mm -hmm. We, you know, make sure that they have tenants, you know, make sure that all of the maintenance and all of those things are, are done. And so Landlord Gopher converts almost just as well as Landlord Aspirin. And so that was the whole thought behind that name. Oh, I like that. Thank I you. didn't know what it meant. Mm -hmm. I saw it and was like, okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you yes. tell us. You know, and I like that. I mm -hmm. like that because you, as a property manager, mm -hmm. you are the gopher for right. landlords. Absolutely. I did real estate for a while. And so um, we dealt with various property management companies. And I just never thought it to that perspective, but right. you are right. It's 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 you are the gopher, right? You know, and so you like doing that. I I love what I do. Oh, wonderful! Um, be, before I got into this, I was a mortgage loan officer, and mm -hmm. and by the world standards, I was extremely successful. I was good at it. I'm good at sales, mm -hmm. so I was good at it. I absolutely did not like being in an office. Yeah, eight yeah. ten hours like the a day. Like freedom of being out. Yeah, so you made a lot of money. This is pre-recession. Yeah. So the, the, the mortgage industry was booming. Yeah. And the whole so, thing changed after that. Yeah. So, I mean, thing. like, there was money to be made. Right. But what you really discover when you when you make a lot of money, mm -hmm. and when you hear people say money's not everything and money can't buy you happiness, you hear these things, right? Right. But people who never had any, they're like, all right, I'll take my chance. <laughs> So what you're saying to, is the people who got money are the ones who are saying that for the well, most part. Well, I'm saying it's a, it's a common saying that a lot of people <laughs> say, but if you never had money for that to be a reality for yeah, you, yeah. It, it came true for me in the, in the, in the mortgage industry yeah. because I found myself making a handsome mm -hmm. salary. I made good money, mm -hmm. and I really understood that the things that are important in life, right. you can't buy. Like, Amen. you know, time with your family, Amen. you know, raising your kids, Amen. not just providing for them and making uh -huh. sure they have new school clothes and stuff like that, but the quality time. And my kids are into the arts. Right. I saw and, that. Yeah. So one of the big things that I wanted to do, just being an entrepreneur, is to be able to control my calendar. Mm. I never wanted to ask a boss, mm -hmm. could I take off to go see their production at school yeah. or whatever. I got to work. I got to work. Yeah. I was in school. I wasn't so much into the arts, but... Um, I played sports. I did play in the band for a little bit. I can't remember my parents coming to anything. And wow. it's not because they didn't want to support me. Right. They couldn't get off. They couldn't get off. Work. They couldn't get off. And so and I didn't I think want that's my kids. a lot of people's issues. I <laughs> right. think that, you know, the love is there, the support is there from afar. Right. But the, the it's it's a challenge to get off when you've got fiscal year, when you've got the reports to get in. Or you're the manager, or whatever, yeah. and you could be the. You don't even have to be the manager. You could be the the assistant, the, the secretary. You just can't get off right. to support your child, right. and um, a lot of people grapple with that. You right. know, but you got to work. Right. You got to keep the roof over the head and things of that nature. And so, a lot of people aren't privy to create a new world or or find another career whereby mm -hmm. in that career they're the they're the boss. Right. That was the big motivation for me, mm -hmm. is to be able to support them and to also be able to support ministry, uh, my, my home church. Like, if I'm needed, there's been times that I've been asked to go there in the middle of the day wow. during the week to, you know, let someone into the church or to oversee something. Like, if I... If I didn't, if I wasn't an entrepreneur, I wouldn't be able to do those things. Mm -hmm. So just having the freedom of your calendar, it's not all about money. That's what I'm saying. You know, just having the freedom of your calendar and be able to make your own moves is very important to me. One of the things that's resonating in my spirit is, is the word entrepreneur. I'm an mm -hmm. entrepreneur as well. And maybe there's somebody out there because we're being led to talk about this mm -hmm. who's grappling with, is this the year I'm going to become an entrepreneur? Okay. And I think you just set somebody free All right. who's probably saying what you're saying. I wanted to be able to go and participate in my kids' endeavors. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to go and participate and be a part of the world mm -hmm. 
you know, you may not have said it that way, but that's the way I received it. Right. And um, somebody out there may be in the same situation mm -hmm. where they're like, you know, I want to be able to support my kid. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to to be there for him or her. And now I have this job. So maybe this is the year that some people will become entrepreneurs or mm -hmm. they will say, you know what? Even if I don't become it this year, I'm going to work towards it. Stack my money and things. That's what I was going to say. That's what yeah. it's about. Go ahead. That's, talk about that. So that's what it's about. So if you do want to become an entrepreneur, understand, and I'm glad this show is about vision mm -hmm. and about vision boards, mm -hmm. you have to be thinking five, ten years down the road. Yeah, you do. You can't just... Plan. I, I know, and I'm, I'm saying this to be funny, but I'm serious. I know some people, they will go to the dollar store, they will get a bucket, a mop, a broom, a dustpan, and some bleach, and they say, I got a cleaning business. <laughs> From the dollar store stuff. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and listen, you could, you could do that, but that yeah. doesn't make you an entrepreneur. I got a cleaning business. No. So, so the thing is, you have to you <laughs> have You're to supposed look. to have commercial right. stuff to clean. <laughs> you should be looking... You should be planning. You should be very strategic <laughs> about being an entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. in my journey, like I said, I was in the mortgage industry. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a sales position. Um, I did have a guy who owned the broker, mm -hmm. um, the brokerage. Um, and I had a lot of freedom, but mm -hmm. it wasn't my brokerage. Right. I worked there for many years, and I used that money, and I started my own business while I was there. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't wait till uh, my property management companies. Uh, income totally matched my mortgage income. As a matter of fact, some people were like, why are you leaving? Like, you will walk away from this for that? Yeah. But once I did, it, I grew it. I, I got it to the point where I'm saying, okay, I, let me see where this takes me. So I really think that people should really do a vision board. They really should mm -hmm. write down what their goals are. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you should be thinking, it's going to take me three to five years to really get this thing off the ground. Right. So, so you might want to stay at their job for a little while longer. I suggest that you do yeah, that. Yeah, you might want to do that. I suggest that you do that. Yeah. Or, because sometimes right. when God puts something in our spirit, we get this spirit of urgency. Well, know? the urgency should be to get started. Yeah. The urgency shouldn't be to just forsake everything else that's okay. keeping the lights on. Hey. That could be a mistake. <laughs> you can't write your vision in the dark. Right. Unless so, you don't have a candle. So <laughs> I, this is what I tell people, because I talk to people about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Figure three to five years yes. before you really start knowing what you're doing as an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. really start making some money. Right. So if you want to be there in 2025, start now. Mm -hmm. Understand that if you procrastinate this year, that doesn't change the formula of three to five years. Right. So what would have manifested in 2025, if, if you wait a year to get started, it's going to happen in 2026. Amen. So don't get upset in 2025 when it ain't happened yet. Mm -hmm. Well, you waited a year. You waited a year. So just get started. Just do little little things to get so, started. So would you say that this incubation page, if you will, I mean incubation period, if you will, is your learning stage? And what yes. are you doing in that five years? Yes. What are you doing? What you're doing is you're learning about being a business owner. Mm -hmm. And you understand that being skilled at whatever it is you do. You may have a skill. You may be a carpenter. You may be a hairstylist. Um, you could be the best hairstylist in the world, but that doesn't mean you know how to run a shop. Right. You may be the best plumber in, in your region. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you know how to run a plumbing company. Right, because I think that what people forget is when you're on this side right. as the employee... Right. And you're and you're providing a service right. and you're saying, you know, hey, you know, I Miss Jones, you know, I can provide this service for you. That's one part of the business. Mm -hmm. But this over here right. where you're dealing with um, people that you have to do business with other than Miss Jones, right. you know, your supply person, right. you know, your um your assistant now you have to buy find an assistant to work with mm -hmm. so that she can do or he can do some of the day-to-day -day grinds of maintaining the office that is different it's than being lot. on the other side it's a lot because everything else you just come in you plug and you play yeah I come in, I do this, I go home. At the end yeah. of the week, a check just shows yeah. up in my account. Absolutely. It doesn't work like that. You get to say good night. Everybody have a great weekend and mm -hmm. not be the one to cut the lights off. Right. You know, and then go home because nobody's there to say good night because you're the right. last one there. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, being an entrepreneur is vastly different than good night, everybody, and I'll see y'all in the morning. Right. Because you're constantly thinking. 
Mm -hmm. constantly working. New ideas are coming in your brain two, three o'clock in the morning. God's got you up like, wake up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Wake up, I got something to tell you. And mm -hmm. you're like, what? Mm -hmm. And and I don't know if people get that when they're on this side and mm -hmm. they now want to come on the other side. Right. And I even tell people sometimes the, win the enemy will wake you up with an idea that will seem good. But if it's taking you off the course of right. what you're supposed to be doing, right. then it's not good. So don't get – if you have a mission, don't get, you know, flooded. When you get flooded with those ideas, yeah, write them down. But – do those things strategically in time. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people that all the time because mm -hmm. they'll be all over the place. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. You know, um, it makes a whole lot of sense because it keeps you on course. I had a friend right. of mine last week. Um, she was talking to me about a situation. Well, I was talking to her about a situation, and that was one of the things she said. She said, stay the course. Don't yes. get off the course. Is this the course? Right. And you need those people of accountability have to. in your life to help you stay on point. Especially once you have attained some level of success where people mm. can see success on you. They can right. see favor on you. Right. Now they're going to want to be coming to you to pitch ideas to you. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to be trying to get you to come mm -hmm. to a meeting. They're going to try to get you mm -hmm. to partner with them. Mm -hmm. And I have learned how to respectfully say, I love your idea. Let me give you some pointers. Or oh, I love this. I love that. This sounds great. It's just not for me. Yeah. It's not, the, yeah. and what I'm, where I'm going in this season right now, I have mm -hmm. to stay focused with this. And I don't want to deter you from doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm here if you want to talk about it later. Mm -hmm. But Adrian, did you have to grow to that? Because, oh, I, because, because, I mean, to me, I feel you have to grow to that because sometimes ideas and people come and that could be what you think is a part of your prayer. You could have been praying to God for that. And so how do you decipher between the two? Well, you, I hope, hopefully when you've been praying, <laughs> you've been getting some discernment. I hope so, too. Because you can sometimes get confused about the whole thing and say, you know. And it's okay. Listen, I'm not saying that I've never done these things. Yeah. But you should be learning as you go. So you can start down a path, and then you can start saying, wait a minute, this doesn't, this doesn't seem right or this mm -hmm. is taking me off course mm -hmm. you'll see the signs things mm -hmm. starting to slow down things is not running right right all right let me let me backtrack and get back on the course mm -hmm. you know just like you, you talked about being taken off course that's just like gps you can make a wrong turn my <laughs> gps took <laughs> like me, the day. <laughs> but you know what i didn't know exactly where this place was right but once the wrong turn was made it recalculated you amen. recalculating amen. to get, get you right back like to that. where you're supposed to be yeah so i mean it happens don't mm -hmm. don't don't beat yourself up mm -hmm. if you make a poor decision just don't be afraid to tell people i can't do this no yeah. whatever because they're so sure not afraid to tell you no you go ask them for money or a sponsorship right how about that one of, I, it, was a, <laughs> it was a quote that i'm trying to remember it correctly it says something like you know good people need to set boundaries because mm -hmm. people who take advantage of them won't yeah i like that say that again so good people and i'm not might not be saying this exactly right but the essence of it is good people should set boundaries because the people who want to take advantage of you won't they will use you all the way up until you're dry until you're dry and they go find somebody else to do oh the same absolutely thing. they mm -hmm. will do that and no care no concern for your well-being um they're just blood suckers absolutely they're just blood suckers and you can probably not even see who they really are for your heart mm -hmm. or not even seeking God so that God can give you clarity about that spirit mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. Right. Well, my wife has told me several times, you know, you're the pastor of your business. I like and so that. I know this is something that pastors go through. I'm not a, mm -hmm. I'm not a pastor mm -hmm. or, or anything like that, but I pray for mine and I mm -hmm. pray for other pastors that I know. Right. Because your heart is for the people. Yep. Your heart is to do. But th you have to take some time out for yeah. your family. You, you have do. to stay the course of whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I pray for my pastor and others because uh, you know, the people will <laughs> Drain People you. will drain yeah, you. They and will. then you can't go do the mission that nope. you're supposed to be doing. Nope. So. Nope. No, I, 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 I mean, you can't, you know, right. and it's just, I, <clears throat> excuse me, my former pastor retired and I was having a conversation with someone because I was excited for him and they, they, this was not so much somebody who was unchurched, uh -huh. maybe just not knowledgeable about this. Mm -hmm. And they said, I've never, I, he's retiring. Mm -hmm. 
you know, how how is he retiring? And I mm -hmm. said, he's retiring from not from God, mm -hmm. <laughs> but just right. from this position right. in in his in his ministry. He's mm -hmm. still going to minister. He just won't be over here. And so I think that sometimes people feel. As a pastor, you're supposed to be dedicated to the church, mm. dedicated to the Lord, dedicated to the church. But they forget that you have this <laughs> life over here, mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And so you got to learn how to give people in those top levels grace mm -hmm. and know that they are a man or they are a woman and they are in this capacity. But then there's another side of them that they right. have to live and they have to also fulfill the plan of God for that capacity. Right. And that's a, let me perfectly segue back to business. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a difference between working on your business and working in mm -hmm. your business. Okay. Let's so talk about that. As an entrepreneur, you should be spending a certain amount of time working on your business. Okay. That's not actually doing the work. That's actually, you know, whatever that business is, it's not actually doing it. So, if, for example, if you are a cleaner, mm -hmm. you know, and you spend all of your time cleaning, mm -hmm. you have no time for marketing to find new customers. Mm -hmm. So you have to be good at the marketing aspect. You have mm -hmm. to be good at, you know, delegating responsibility. You have to be good at tracking, you know, your, your progress so you see how close you are getting to your goals and all of this kind of stuff. So that's the kind of stuff that you need to do. So just like you were saying with pastors, you know, if you are spending all of your time feeding sheep and they're just coming at you. Yep. Not to say that's not that is your job, but mm -hmm. if, if you have not part of your job. if you have not delegated ministers, right, department heads, whoever, to help you in this labor, mm -hmm. and you're spending all of your time and they're, you know, feeding directly from you, then the minist then the direction of the ministry or whatever can be hindered. Absolutely. Because just like with your with your business, if you spend all of your time doing that, then how are you gonna really push that that vision that um I'm sorry, that vision or that business forward. You won't be able to. You can't. You won't be able to because you're <laughs> going to get exhausted. Right. And you won't be able to, you know. Um, um, one of the things that I do want to know about is, before we get to the vision board segment, was mm -hmm. what inspired you to do a vision board? Yeah. Um, what inspired me was, I first of all, I saw for years that other people would do it. Right. Um, and I was still in the mindset of a lot of times I was working in my business, just mm -hmm. like I said. I wasn't spending as much time as I wanted to work on my business. Mm -hmm. When I got into that mindset of I need to work on my business, I need to really start to set things up. I understand what the word says about writing vision and making mm -hmm. it plain. Mm -hmm. I understand about putting things in front of you so you can see it. Mm -hmm. You have to have that daily reminder because mm -hmm. like we just said, people will take you off course. Mm -hmm. So if you have a vision board, and I, I don't just suggest that you create one and stick it in a closet. My vision board <laughs> sits. Why not? <laughs> you have, that's the purpose of it. You have to put it someplace where you're looking at it all the time. Because how else are you going to be able to track your progress and right. how you're doing? Okay. Um, when we get to the vision board section, you'll see that some of the things on my 2019 vision board reappear on my 2020. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. You just keep, you know, you have to keep reminding yourself, you have to keep it in front of you. One of the things that I've discovered about vision, the Greek um, definition for vision, okay. I fell in love with the Greek definition of vision. Because I'm also going to write about it in my publication later on. But one of the definitions from for um, vision comes from this Greek definition, per se. So the Greek definition of vision is to see a coming into view. Mm, okay. And when I, I fell in love with that because it was like, that's futuristic. Mm -hmm. That's futuristic. And faith ties into that, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things unseen. Right. And so when I saw that, to see a coming into view, wow, the vision on the vision board to me says, this is something that's coming into view. Absolutely. Vision and, vision and sight are not necessarily the same thing. Right. People think sight is vision. No. Vision definitely speaks towards seeing afar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and also believing in it too. Absolutely. There's so many things that tie into vision, in my opinion. Faith ties into vision. Um, hope ties into vision, and you just sitting there having an expectancy. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that you were saying earlier was you um, 
redirected your business per se. Mm -hmm. You reinvented some things, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that that is indicative. I think if we look back at McDonald's years ago, mm -hmm. the golden arches, they look a little different than what the logo looks like today mm -hmm. you know and i think a part of business is reinv reinventing yourself i believe it's either every five or every ten years you want to <laughs> reinvent yourself you want to remarket yourself right. you want to look at what's working right. and also what's not and so how give us some tips or sh share with us again or more so how important it is to just stay in that mindset that you need to keep on marketing and reinventing so until you get to the end which you know, right. we don't know when the end will be. So I'm glad I'm, I didn't know you were gonna ask that. Me but neither. literally <laughs> literally on my way here, yeah. I had a conversation with my cousin who's mm -hmm. who's a PhD mm -hmm. and she w helped businesses and even government entities look at what they're doing and figure out ways to make whatever their message is convert better to the person wow, that's supposed I to re receive it. Okay. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. So I, I contacted her on my drive here. Wow. And I said, hey, I want you to take a, a look at my business. Yeah. One of the most important things that any entrepreneur needs to do is don't drink your own Kool-Aid. Because, you what know, does that first mean? of all, you have, a, you have to have a high level of self-confidence in whatever your vision is, whatever your dreams and goals are. You have to have a high level, level of self-confidence mm -hmm. to even start this journey. Okay. okay. And because it's going to be a whole bunch of naysayers and yeah. people to tell you, how are you going to do that? I don't see how you, you know, that's what they told me. I don't mm -hmm. come from uh, parents that were uh, entrepreneurs. I don't come from money. I don't come from... So when I started saying, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur, there were more people saying, no, I don't see it, than people saying, yeah, I believe in you. You can do that it. That happens. I'm telling you, yeah. the minute you open your mouth and say, I'm going to start, I'm going to do, I'm going to change, I'm going to work out, I'm going to whatever, right. there's this <laughs> right. <laughs> Advice so to for you. So to push through that, uh -huh. you have to have a high level of self confidence in yourself, mm -hmm. faith in God, and your vision, whatever mm -hmm. whatever it's going to be. And be quiet about it. And be quiet about and it. And be quiet. I mean, like a friend of mine told me months ago, move in silence. Right. You know, because I'm telling you, it works. It right. works. But here's the thing: when I say don't drink your own Kool Aid, what does that mean? It means that once it starts working. Mm. Once the people who say, I don't see how that's going to work, start uh, start changing their tune. Another quote that I saw that I like, I remember, <laughs> it said, hustle until the people. <laughs> I saw that one. <laughs> <It> is, <laughs> and hustle until you no longer have to introduce yourself, I think. That's, that's one. one. But that's my, one. My, the one I was talking about specifically said, hustle until the people who were talking about you come and ask you for a job. Ooh. I didn't so, hear that one. So but that's a good one. So the, but do you want to hire them? Not, not I mean, it's the concept. <laughs> it's the concept of the naysayer now seeing yeah, the, fruit, you made it. the fruit of your mm -hmm. labor and now saying you hiring. It's, yeah. It has happened to me. The point that I mean, the point that I was saying about don't drink your own Kool Aid is, don't let that self confidence turn into arrogance. Mm. Stay humble because you can mm. start believing. Oh, yeah, I did this. I did that. You're on hype. You on hype. You ain't, you're not giving no credit to God mm -hmm. for 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 breathing on your business. Yeah. I went through droughts in my business. I had to reevaluate myself. It wasn't right. even just the business. I reevaluate the business periodically, but mm -hmm. I have to reevaluate myself. Absolutely. Because I've gone through droughts, and I'm mm -hmm. saying, okay, I know this business in and out. Yeah. I know how to build systems. Yeah. I know how to network. I know how to train staff. I know how to answer questions. I know the business. Why am I not seeing fruit? Okay, well, it's me. You know what I mean? Yep. Some things All that I had to you. do. Right. 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 So, you know, you, you let that uh, success or that fruit that come in, if you let it turn into arrogance, mm -hmm. you start saying that it's, it's all about you and that mm -hmm. you're doing it, you can see a huge change. So, entrepreneurs, do not drink your own Kool Aid. Don't drink your own Kool Aid. <laughs> Two things. One, um, thank you for that, mm -hmm. you know, because um, God will allow experiences to come into your life that will humble you if you mm -hmm. are drinking your own Kool-Aid. Absolutely. He will. He will allow those that those valley moments. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait a minute, I was on a mountaintop last year and I'm in a valley, you know, and you may be in that valley for a while mm -hmm. because he's trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. And he's also saying, look, there are some things you need to change, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe it starts with you. I mm -hmm. also feel, too, that the person on the other side who's an employee, they don't get to know this side until they've gotten into it. Mm-hmm. 
They don't get to know because the boss isn't really going to them and saying, mm -hmm. oh, business is down. Mm -hmm. He wants to stay motivated and mm -hmm. have them to stay motivated and excitement for Absolutely. the job that they're right. coming into. And they, they, they feel they have job security, right. you know, but the other side where you're he, the boss is having meetings with other bosses and they're like, look, we're in a drought. Are you in a drought too? <laughs> no. right. What are you doing about your drought? Because right. maybe it could help me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the part that you discover once you become an entrepreneur. We're going to take a commercial break. Okay. And when we come back, Mr. Adrian is going to show us his 2019 um, vision board and his 2020. And he's going to share with us what happened during 2019. Did he do everything? Did he accomplish all his goals? Did he put some of the goals on 2020? You know, and so I'm excited to see what are some of the things that he set forth last January and what happened but between January and December. So we're going to see all of that when we come back. You've been watching the Pamela J Show, and I'll see you guys when we get back. So we'll be talking to Mr. Adrian about his vision board from last year. Okay, so... It's going to be a veganistic breakfast at Breakfast Mojo, and we're going to give a review at the end of all of this. So let's go ahead and see what we have. Okay, so what we have here is tofu. And so what you do is you get the tofu in a pack, whichever brand you want to get. Um, it's fine. Get firm tofu and then squeeze the water out in the sink. And once you do squeeze all the water out, because tofu really doesn't have a flavor, okay. it's, it's actually soybean. These little little um they look like little teeny miniature meatballs now, they're sausages these is gimme lean that is the name okay. of it <laughs> so i'm putting them in um, it smells great and and, and, and the reason you don't have to put them in is is completely up to you you know those of you who um it looks like sausage it does look like sausage and it looks like eggs <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to put some peppers and onions in, wow, which I already already prepared, that. already so cut up. Right. Red onions, yellow, orange, and red pepper. Right now for our green. Look at that. So what cilantro. is cilantro? Cilantro, folks. Yes. Hey, look at the cilantro. Yeah. It's fresh cilantro. Look at mm -hmm. the pretty color there. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is yes. garlic and herb. So I'm put, it's not going to be strong though. Now, okay. the minced garlic is strong, but this is not. Oh, yes. some Italian seasoning, yes. some rosemary. You know, when it's an yes. Italian medley, it's like a, it's like a melody, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is onion and herb. Onion and herb. Mm -hmm. This is lemon pepper. Lemon pepper. Mm -hmm. Hello, we are back. We are back. We are back in our first show of the new year. We have been talking about the benefits of creating a vision board, but actually before we got to that part, we were talking about entrepreneurship. And so right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys Mr. Waters' um, vision board from last year. Okay. And one of the things that he shared with me was that this was his first vision board. Yeah. I was under the impression he had done this a couple of times. And so this is your first, and I'm going to be doing my first this mm -hmm. year, so I'm excited. So tell us about some of the things that's on here, and then tell us, did some of these things come to pass? Okay. Well, first let me just say this. I knew I wanted to do it in 2018. What did I do? Like a lot of people do, I procrastinated. Uh -huh. Before you know it, it's the middle of February, March, and you're like, eh, I ain't doing it now. Right, right. Never so, too late, though. Yeah, I know, but I didn't do it in 2018. So uh -huh. 2019, towards I mean, towards the end of 2018, what I did was I had a vision board party at my house. Nice. And I I went out and I bought all the arts and crafts and um, had family and friends come over mm -hmm. and let everybody if they if they couldn't find a clipping in a magazine I let mm -hmm. them use my printer and print mm -hmm. out some stuff. Okay. So so what this, we got here? So this is 2019. I'll start at the top. That says we still do. So in November of 1999, I married my wife Tiara. <laughs> 
And so November of 2019, we celebrated 20 years. Nice. And um, so we had our vow renewal and we had like a wedding ceremony because Beautiful. in 99, we didn't have like a big wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we did it up and we had a big wedding nice. vow renewal. Um, as I, Charlotte on here. Yeah, as in, as I was saying, I'm in property management, and all of the man, all of the properties that I manage are in Maryland, and I wanted to expand outside of this territory. Mm -hmm. So I put Charlotte on there because I had my eyes on on Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a booming yeah, it real is. estate market. It is. I tell people Charlotte is ATL 30 mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. when everybody started mass migrating to mm -hmm. Atlanta. Um, so I still have, you know plans for Charlotte, but I didn't do that. That was one of the ones that I didn't start uh, a business in, in Charlotte, but I put that on my vision board. Mm -hmm. um, we were managing coming um, in, in, in the early part of the year, we were managing about a about just under 100 properties, about 80 different properties, and I put 250 on my vision board. That's mm -hmm. my short-term goal, to have 250 properties under under management. Wow. I did not reach that goal either. <laughs> but what did um, you get to? I got to about 150. Mm -hmm. Would you have before? About 87, 88, so you something like that. that. Almost. Yeah, but I didn't get to 250. That's but that's okay. cool. I set, I set the goal high. I knew this was going to be not easy to obtain, but I didn't want to. I said, I'm not going to sell God short. I'm not going to cut myself short. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put on my vision board something that I know I can do in my own power. Exactly. So I, I put 250 on there. It didn't come. That one didn't happen, but it's on there. Here is like a depiction of just exercising and working out. Mm -hmm. Something that I want to do mm -hmm. to to get healthy. Mm -hmm. I was real inconsistent with that one. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people be inconsistent. I was with that real one. inconsistent with that. <laughs> and you know why? Why? Because food is delicious. It is good. It is delicious. It is good. So I'm very gonna, good. I'm gonna I'm gonna segue down to pray <laughs> because. That's something that I wanted to do more of and something that I need y'all to do for this. Y'all do uh -huh. that for me for that. <laughs> so they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. <laughs> and what's the one beside you, close to you, over there? This one yes. here? Yes. This one was, um, this is kind of like a graph showing, um, I'm, I'm going to read it to you. It says, identify processes, review and update, analyze as is, des designed to be, test, implement, and implement to be. This is just more of refining processes mm -hmm. um, that's something that every business needs to do we talked about that earlier mm -hmm. just I already have some processes in place mm -hmm. but just put more processes and systems in place real quick if I could sure. I'm a systems guy if you're gonna run a business it's mm -hmm. not just about what you do you have to implement systems mm -hmm. I think you mentioned McDonald's or some fast mm -hmm. food restaurant mm -hmm. earlier I love McDonald's mm -hmm. not their food I love their, their business model mm -hmm. They have the one of the best systems ever. Right. You have a multi. I think Chick Fil A too. Multi. I mean, all pretty much all fast food restaurants. But McDonald's is kind of like at the top. They're like the, invented the whole franchising yeah. system. Yeah. But you have a multi multi billion dollar industry mm -hmm. of restaurants that's primarily ran by teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they have perfect system in place. So a teenager in Baltimore that. Big Mac that they make is going to taste just like a teenager made one in Seattle Absolutely. and a teenager made one in China Yeah, because of systems. Mm -hmm. So, When I did real estate years ago, that was the first time that that word was ingrained in my brain. Mm -hmm. And I do credit them for teaching me about having a system, having a such and such. I'll use my own script as an example. A lot of people don't know, but I write out a script for the show. Mm -hmm. I'm just not good at winging it. Yeah. And when I had a radio show years ago, that was my first time doing a script, and it's mm -hmm. so systematic. Yeah. And because um, our friend Van Bynum, hey Van, connected up, Van? us, um, <laughs> it was like not a scramble per se to get yeah. all of the information. But I will say that today, because of a system created, I was able to plug questions in and all of that to prepare for you mm -hmm. in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. And before, it took a little longer, but because of a system, mm -hmm. you know, things are moving a little more rapidly. So systems are very, very important. Absolutely. Especially if you're trying to go from employee to entrepreneurship. Right. And that's what that five years of learning is, is all about. Right. You know, and also mentoring mm -hmm. and connecting mm -hmm. and partnering. Mm -hmm. You know, God is allowing me to, to meet wonderful people such as mm -hmm. yourself and not only just 
meet them, but then have a conversation about partnering to do greater things mm -hmm. that I used to pray for mm -hmm. and pray about mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad you didn't reach all your, your goals mm -hmm. because it means that it can do what? what? Go <laughs> to the next year. Right. You know, you got year. that 250 on there too. I still got the 250 you on still there. Still got the 250. Because that's a goal. If you notice, it's bigger than the other 250. <laughs> <laughs> and what does that mean? I just wanted it more pronounced. <laughs> Love it. And I even wrote on here, the other one just said 250. Yeah. And you know what it's still for. But I even hand wrote in here, units under management. Amen. I wanted to be Amen. more specific. Yeah. I wanted to be more targeted. Yeah. I wanted to be bigger. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So tell us about some of the things on here. All right. So this is for 2020. I see that you've got, let's start over here. <laughs> you want to start with that one? Let's start with that one. That's the vacation one. That's the vacation one. So I hand wrote my name and my wife's. Tierra's nice. name on, on these She's two so pineapples, cute. right? So there is two pineapples <laughs> on the beach. Is that a male and a female pineapple? Yeah, on the beach. <laughs> because my goal is I want a vacation once a quarter. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people vacation once a year. I work hard. Right, right. You need that with, time off. I work hard. And I I want I would like to vacation once a quarter. And it doesn't have to be anything extended. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe two pronounced, if that's the right word to use, vacation and maybe two quick getaways. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I want to be gone at least once a quarter. That's what that is. Okay. And as you can see, Charlotte's not on here anymore, but I put D.C. on there. Okay. Because that's that's our neighbor. Okay. And it's obtainable. And I have a lot of customers who want me to be in D.C. Mm -hmm. It just makes the most sense. It nice. makes more sense than Charlotte right now. Right now. Um, I, you know, we already are in P.G. County. We're mm -hmm. already in Charles County. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, the only reason why I haven't done D.C. is just because I want to make sure that I build infrastructure there that we can respond to something. But I'm like, if I can do that in Charlotte, I should be able to do it in D.C. Amen. Maybe, so maybe D.C. is the way to Charlotte. Right. That's what I figured. I'll do D.C. first, and mm -hmm. then Charlotte will be on the future uh, vision board. So we have this big old, I see that you, this is big, too, than what it was on yeah, the back page. it's bigger because... <laughs> Because it's more important. Okay. It's more important. <laughs> Why so? I realized the mistake I made last year, and I was okay. inconsistent with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I even let you in on it, because I try to be transparent. Uh-huh. I let y'all in on something. I have a gym in my house. Okay. I, don't, I hate going to the gym. Yeah. I hate going to the gym. I know. I, when I finish working out or doing whatever, I want to take a shower and probably lay down. Mm -hmm. And when I finish working out and I'm tired, my arms and legs feel like rubber, and I yes. still have to drive home. Yes. I just hate that. So okay. I have a gym in my basement. And I was so lazy last year that I didn't even go down in my basement and work wow. out. But I am going to You're do You're changing it. that this year. Yes, that's why it's bigger. <laughs> like, yes. And I hand wrote on there uh, 195 pounds. I want to get under 200 pounds. Okay, wonderful. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know if I'm going to get there this year, but I, that's, the go that's the goal mm -hmm. to get to. And it's something that you see every day that you need to work towards. Absolutely. Right? Okay, Absolutely. so what's this in the middle? In the middle is La Familia. So La Familia is a venue that uh, my partner Stevie Johnson and I open in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. It's an event space. We we do concerts. We've done plays. We've done uh, spoken word nice. stuff. We've had uh, bank. When we renewed our vows last year, we had our our reception there. Beautiful. So it's a. It's, we just opened um, last year. The middle of last year. And so I just really want to put the systems in place and grow that business as, nice. as a secondary income. For Wonderful. My real and over business. there by you? This here? The other one. This here? Yes. That is, I'm going to be honest with you, I put it on there. Be, not that I think that it's going to manifest necessarily this year. Oh. It could. Oh. But this is something I want to start to put the pieces in place for it to manifest in the future. What is it? That is a restaurant. That is, that is going to be another stream that I want to do. Wonderful. But first things first, mm -hmm. so the real estate is my bread and butter. La Familia with my partner, Stevie, that's a business that we want to grow. So mm -hmm. most of my concentration is going to be there. Right. But, I, you know, as I get this rolling, I'm going to start getting this rolling. Okay. I, I want to open a. I want to open a restaurant. And books. You going to read more books this year? I'm going to read more because I, 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 I enjoy reading. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, what is it, the auto book 
Yeah, they, you want to hold it in listen. your hand. Yeah, I want to turn pages. Mm-hmm. I don't like reading on I the screen. I notice when I do audiobook, I, I rewind a lot. I rewind and rewind and rewind, which I is need, not a bad thing. I, for me to digest it, I mm-hmm. need to turn pages. Mm-hmm. You know, when people were like, why don't you just get it? You know, mm-hmm. those. I was like, mm, I don't mm-hmm. like it. Uh, I took a couple of things from you sharing your vision board. Thank you so much for sharing your vision Absolutely. board and both the good and the bad. Because I think that sometimes when we do a vision board, and like I said, I'm going to be doing mine this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad you shared that you didn't accomplish everything. Right. Because that just kind of dispels the notion of you thinking that, oh, it's all going to come to pass by right. December 31st. It's not magic. Oh, it's, it's not. not it's you got to work it. Yeah, you have to work it. You, you have to work it. You don't just do this and then pray over it and be like, all right, God, do the rest. No, oh, well, you know, that faith without some work <laughs> is dead. Right. You know, but I'm glad that you shared that everything didn't come to pass. But I also am glad that you shared that you put 250 on for your properties and you started off with 80 and you doubled that. Absolutely. And I think mm-hmm. the drive... For you doubling that was because you were trying to reach the goal of 250, mm-hmm. although it wasn't reached, but you still doubled what you had. I did. Had I did. you not even put the goal of 250, let's say you put 150, mm-hmm. you would have been like, oh, I did it. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad that you said that you wanted to basically do what I said in the beginning, because God will can do exceedingly abundantly above right. what you ask or think. And you wanted 250, but you, you got double mm-hmm. of what you started off with. right right and i think that's amazing because you. you didn't have 160 right. right you had 80 something right you know and i think that in itself was remarkable so your vision board or anybody's vision board ties into writing the vision and making it plain mm-hmm. and from Rebecca, i took that other people are to see your vision mm-hmm so somebody else can come in your room or your office and see your vision mm-hmm. and inquire about your vision. And your vision board becomes a testimony. Absolutely. Because it's able to say, oh, I did this. Oh, mm-hmm. I did that. It's almost like a walking resume. That's right. You know? Mm-hmm. And so your plans for 2020, you're going to exceed these goals. Right. Um, give us some tips on the importance of putting together a vision board. Um and how even in that you should be systematic. Yeah. First of all, I, I don't think you should clutter your vision board with 100 things. Oh, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Because I've seen that. some that are like. Yeah, it's a collage. You know, it's, I'm like. It's look, like right here, it's look, a little yeah, thing. It's yeah. like. I'm looking on. for Waldo on your vision board. Yeah. There's too much stuff on there. Okay, so keep it simple. So I would keep it simple. Good. I, I like the number 12. I, um, um, me and some guys, we start now. It doesn't, it doesn't, I'm up to 12. Mine oh, doesn't okay. have 12 oh, okay, on okay, it. Okay. But I, I like the number 12 as the max. Okay. You know, so many examples of 12 in, in the Bible. Bible. Right. And it's 12 months in a year. So, okay. It, max, that makes you, sense. You, you're spreading out one goal per month. That makes sense. But I would put more than 12 on there. That's, and, and I would definitely. Try to since like you're that. since you're praying over it and mm-hmm. you're trusting God for these things, mm-hmm. just like I said with the two fifty, don't mm-hmm. put stuff on there that you know you can do in your own power. Right, right, right. That's not a vision board. Right. That's not that's not vision casting. Right. And so let me ask you a question. So in putting these things, let's say twelve or up uh-huh. to twelve on the board, um, should prayer life be a part of that? Because yeah. aren't you going to need the strength of the Lord to even accomplish some of these goals? You're going to need the strength of the Lord to accomplish all of them. <laughs> You're going to need the strength of the Lord to tape these little clippings onto the actual board. You need right. him for everything. Yeah. So, yeah, prayer should, prayer should all absolutely mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. on everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm um, also appreciative of the fact that your um, a lot of the things came to pass. Mm-hmm. You know, your, your your properties, even though it wasn't 250 but you put it on the back for what, almost, what, 100 more yeah. this year. Yeah, put it back on there. So you did there. 80 last year. Yeah. 100 shouldn't be so bad. And put it back on there. And yeah. so let me ask you a question. Do you also feel that vision can be redirected? Because um, you redirected Charlotte to, to D.C. Why did you do that? Okay. Well, I redirected it because I Sh- Charlotte was a goal something that i wanted to do but i didn't even get i didn't even get anywhere close to it i was so busy getting that extra 80 properties that i did not have the bandwidth to even start in another market Mm. so if if the real goal was to 
expand to another market, DC just makes that much more sense. We're in PG. I have properties in Hyattsville. I have properties in Capitol Heights. Like, mm -hmm. we're right there. Mm -hmm. Just to go into DC just makes that much more sense mm -hmm. to expand there. So, the, the goal wasn't so much Charlotte, the goal was expansion. So, so God changed your mind about the goal. I don't think God really, t I mean, I don't think, I'm not putting it on God. Right. I'm saying when I put my vision board together, these are the things that I wanted to accomplish, and I prayed prayed over them. And so when I put Charlotte on there, it was just I wanted to expand to another market. Charlotte's popping. Let me put Charlotte down. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I got some divine inspiration, put Charlotte on the vision but board. But I'm glad that you brought this up, and let me tell you why. A lot of times... When things aren't accomplished, we start to feel bad about that or bad mm -hmm. about ourselves. Mm -hmm. When if you s be still and know that right. God is God, he can say and common sense can say mm -hmm. and other people can say, yo, dude, mm -hmm. is your is your goal more properties? Mm hmm. Or is your goal properties in Charlotte? Mm -hmm. Your ultimate mm -hmm. goal is more properties. Absolutely. And so God had you to redirect your path from right here. Not saying you can't have mm -hmm. or won't have stuff in Charlotte, but if your goal is more properties, let's work on that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm grateful that you're sharing that. Although you put something on your vision board, mm -hmm. sometimes it's not manifested, but it doesn't mean it's not going to be. It's just mean that sometimes you have to redirect how it's going to be manifested. Can I make a football reference? Make a football reference. I All watch right. a little so bit I, of ball. Yeah, I played football. Well, not not professionally on college. <laughs> when I was younger, I played. And I loved the game. Go Ravens. I know it's a lot of uh, Redskins fans and D.C. I'm, people. I'm a Dallas fan. Yeah, you're a Dallas fan? <laughs> I'm a Dallas fan. Still, I, my condolences to you. Too. Oh! But go Ravens. Yeah, uh, go Ravens. They are doing very well. We're doing extremely yeah, well. Yeah, I'm proud of you guys. But coaches, our coaches should tell us that football is – the game of inches. You think of this 100-yard field. Mm -hmm. You think of scoring a touchdown. You're not going to score a touchdown on every play. Right. You're not even going to get a first down on every play. Right. So really, when you think of it as a game of inches, just moving the ball forward, mm. just forward progress, mm. that's what the vision board is supposed to, is supposed right to do for you. It's just a, you, it, you're not going to score a touchdown on every one. Right. You're not going to reach every one of these goals. Put, right. them, on in, put them on for the next year. Just mm -hmm. keep it in front of you. Just keep moving forward. That's, I love that's it. the whole thing. I love it. I love the football analogy because what you're basically saying is each inch, each inch gets right. you closer to the goal line. Just keep moving. Just right. keep moving. Just keep moving. And you should be proud of yourself no matter the accomplishment. Mm -hmm. You know. So the first step in the benefits of doing a vision board is to do a vision board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do one. Is to do a vision board. But I think before you do the vision board, you need to write down what you feel your vision should be for the year. Do you cook? A little bit. I'm a, a very little bit. <laughs> I don't care how. Listen, you need to learn how to measure things. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's what. It, that's what I was going I with. I love that. it. I love it. You can't just throw a bunch of stuff in the pot and think it's going to taste good. A vision board is going to help you measure. Amen. I like that. Your progress. You mm -hmm. have to. I like that. I like that, brother. I do. It's going to help you measure. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. And so. Five things I think that I'm going to say are my takeaways. All right. Okay. Um, one, um, it's about measuring. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Two, get your supplies together. Get mm -hmm. your magazines mm -hmm. and all your, or your stuff that you may have to print from the computer so that you can paste it on. Get your mm -hmm. supplies. Get your um, cardboard. Get your glue mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But also have a plan. Mm-hmm. Have a plan for, don't you think, for how you're going to yeah. accomplish these goals. You have to. You have to. And I think the other two takeaways were, um, a, I mean, do it. Mm -hmm. And then put it in front of you. Put it in front of you. In front of you. Put it in front of you. We are wrapping up. And um, I just want to thank Mr. Waters for pressing his way and coming down to share with us, <laughs> thank you, you know, for some me. tips. And uh, we hope that you you go ahead and create your own vision board and create it the way that you want. It's no perfect one, right. and it's no wrong one. You know, right. I'm glad that it wasn't cluttered mm -hmm. because I have seen that. I've gone to people's houses and seen their vision board, and I'm like, what is that? You mm -hmm. know, because it's just so much on there. 
And to me, if it's all of that on there, how are you going to right. at least accomplish some of these goals? Right. I plan to go and get my stuff this weekend. I plan to go and get my magazines. I plan to even put how much money I want to make by the end of the year. Absolutely. And it's a huge amount. And I'm like trusting God for that. And right. so I'm like, let's do it. And, you know, I'm just not letting anything stop me. Right. And so in wrapping up today, um, keep before you Habakkuk 2. I said that this year is my vision of double, oh, my theme is um, a year of double vision. And I am going to be trusting God for things. I didn't see having a show last year. Um, my book got published last year, and I didn't even have a vision for it. And so this year, I'm asking God and trusting God for greater and better because I'm going to have a vision board right in front of me. And so I thank God for that. The word is does not lie. You know, write the vision and make it plain so that they that read it may run with it. And you who read it may run with it. This has been the Pamela J Show. If you like this show, please share it with others. Go to my YouTube channel and um, subscribe to that. And... Um, I'm just excited, and I hope that you stay excited about all of the things that God has for you to accomplish this year. Don't let anybody block you or stop you from obtaining all that God has for you. Stay encouraged. If that means you got to drop some friends off this year so that you can reach your goals, please go ahead and do so. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, I'm just saying, you have to get everything and everybody out of the way so that you can live a more productive mm -hmm. and healthier life. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people around you can cause you to have an unhealthy life. Absolutely. It can be toxic. toxic. That's all I'm saying. And so you guys have a blessed day. You enjoy the rest of the day, the rest of the week. I will see you next week on the show. And um, you just be blessed. And go and, and get your stuff so you can do a vision board. <laughs> so then, And you know what? Email and tell me if you are so we can just kind of check on each other throughout the year this has been pj pamela j i will see you guys next week you'll be blessed goodbye <music>